if you move, whether that be from a town to town or across a country or, like us, from one country to another, you inevitably will run into this thing called culture shock. And so as two Americans who have been living in the UK for over two and a half years now, I thought me and Rachel would talk about some of those culture shocks we've experienced. Rachel and I. Rachel and I will talk about some of those culture shocks that we have experienced on what I'm calling Americans in the Motherland. <laughs> oh, no! -la -la -la. <laughs> it's horrible. You have a better name? No. I, nope, I don't. Americans in the Motherland. <laughs> what is one culture shock moment that you experience since moving here? Oh, well, the first one. When people are like, Hiya, you're right. And I'm like, of course I'm fine. Why wouldn't I be? Because in the States, if you ask if someone's all right, it's like, are you all right? Whereas here, it's like, what's up? Well, didn't you say like you had one mm. particular friend who says like, that's like, that is the thing that she yeah. says to yeah. people? Yeah, so I love her. She, she is Irish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> but so, she does ask. She's genuinely so sweet, though. But um, sometimes she's like, you're right. You're right. A little too often for me. And I start to be like, do I need to check if I'm okay? Like, it's just one of those things. Uh, so now that I've said one, Shelby, what is one of yours? So I think one of the biggest culture shocks I experienced when we first got here was their reliance on having information that proves that you live there and having a bank account. Whenever you sign up for a service, like in the States, it was just, you give them credit card information or debit card information, and then they're just happy. You have to prove <laughs> give that- Give us your money. <laughs> <laughs> Here it's like, no, you can't just give us money. Prove to me your worth. <laughs> I know, it's like, we want to know that you live here. What's your second one? Yeah, I guess the second one would be grocery stores. Mm. I think what takes me aback is the lack of variety. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, really, mm. you only get variety if you're going to buy tea. <laughs> like, seriously, like every other aisle. Or crisps. Or crisps. <laughs> That's or the area. Biscuits. Yes. Which, the, yeah, the, which, the important things. Yes, the important. <laughs> which, by the way, biscuits. Or cookies. That was hard because in the States, you can have access to a load of different foods. Mm -hmm. Moving to a small island nation where that's just not the case. It's just different. Finding the eggs near the baking aisle. And it's like way on the other side. Like the food's over here. The baking aisle's over here. Which another one that they have a lot of stuff in. And then it's like... Thanks. And yours? Your second one? So my second <laughs> one, again, deals with money. And once again, it's how it's how bank accounts work over here. Oh, yeah. In the States, you are told never to give, like, your bank account mm -hmm. number mm -hmm. out. But here in the motherland, <laughs> if you need to set up any kind of account, any kind of service, mm -hmm. heck, sometimes when you just pay people, mm -hmm. you literally give them your bank information. Mm -hmm. Actually... In a way, it's very convenient ah, because you can easily can. transfer money between people. Anyways, what's your third one? I used to work at this board game cafe. I'm doing my thing, ringing up a table that was really fun, by the way. And they were like a load of Scottish people. And they had me this bill that I've never seen before in my entire life. And I didn't know if we could accept it. And they got really upset about it. And I didn't know why. And I was like, I just need, I'm just... I'm new, I, I'm not, I'm new to the country. Like they were like, yeah, yeah, we accept this. And I was like, wait, I just realized something. There is multiple currencies in the UK. You're in the state to use the dollar. It's it. You're in the UK and there's a couple currencies and it's just like, why? The worst thing is, is when you ask if it can be accepted, I feel like I was about to start a war. So my third and final one, mm. this is gonna probably be silly to a lot of people, but for me it was eggnog. Christmas comes around, you know, in the States, you can go into any grocery store and you can find a variety. So like, I tried to find one online and I did find one online in Amazon. And of course, all the reviews, which are British, were like, oh, this is great eggnog. I love the taste. And I was like, okay. So I bought it <laughs> and I got it. And it was not nope. eggnog. I don't know what those reviews were, 
<laughs> but the British people have been drinking inadequate eggnog, <laughs> apparently, for their whole lives because it was nothing like you would get in the States. Coffee was one mm. for me that was really weird. I would talk to people about a coffee and I would go to a coffee shop and I'd look for my own filter coffee and it's like super difficult to find because mm -hmm. I drink black coffee. It's all espresso based. Yes. Which, to be fair, their espresso is really nice, mm. but sometimes I just want a filter. Anyway, that is our six culture shock moments. What are some of your culture shock moments when you've lived in other countries? Please leave a comment down below, let us know. If you have a question about what it's like living in the UK yeah. as an American, also leave that in the comments below. Mm. Please, of course, like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.